particular that they wanted to talk about? So I write the question. Does anyone have anything that they want to talk about? Not really. Not really? <laughs> okay. So we'll do it my way. All right. So we're sort of here. Um, let's see. You can also um, go to the New York Times. Anyone here read the New York Times? Or try, try to read the New York Times? No. No? I read CNN. You read CNN? Yeah. Okay. Uh, New York Times is pretty good as well. Um, there's all these different topics. There's uh, world topics, U.S. topics, politics, um, specifically New York, um, business, technology, sports, science, health, the arts, um, style, and opinion. So, which one of these on the side here do you guys want to pick? We can read an article, an interesting article. Which one sounds? You guys want to read about New York? New York sound good? How about world? How about world? Okay, let's do world. And then we can go back to New York. Oops. Okay. All right, world. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> Sorry. My computer just like doing its own thing. Hold on. <laughs> okay. World. There we go. All right. Okay. So, ooh, we could talk about the Pope. Have you guys heard about what happened? Yes. No. Yes, I am from Italy, of course. Hi, Kevin. Did you, hear, did you hear about the new um, allegations? Yes, yes. Yeah? Um, Status and company. Let's see. Let's read this article. This is huge. He was the, I think he's the second pope ever in history to resign while in office. Right? Yes. The last one, if I'm not wrong, uh, it was uh, about... Uh, uh, three centuries ago, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, the last pope to resign was, and uh, uh, you know, it's a very weird situation, very and yeah, and there are a lot of rumors about that uh, about pope uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the last pope to resign, I think, I think that was a, um, let's see, the last pope to resign, I think that was. And he was the first, okay, so this pope was the first pope to resign in 598 years. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and there are a lot of rumors. Yeah, I'm teaching a class. And, uh, I'm teaching a class. Right now? Yeah. So 598 years ago. Sorry, that's my roommate. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. 598 years ago. Um, was yes. the last pope to resign. All right, so we're in 2013, uh, minus 598. What year is that? Who's good at math? But uh, um, I, yeah, I, I have an opinion about this. Um, yeah. I think um, uh, the last pope, this pope, had to stand a lot of pressure because of a lot of scandals uh -huh. related uh, related to uh, pedophilia inside the Catholic Church and um, about uh, a spy in Vatican very near to the pope. If I'm not wrong, he was uh, his. Is a secretary or a very strict 
collaborate um, yeah. a very strict person near to him yeah. and um, now some people think uh, he is going to be out uh, a very heavy scandal about a girl killed many years ago in Vatican State oh. and uh, some people think uh, that the Pope won't uh, be won't be uh, on the Vatican chair when uh, this scandal will be out <laughs> oh. to the press. Oh, I see. But uh, okay. maybe maybe they are only rumors, but <laughs> maybe, maybe there is a point of truth. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let's uh, let's read this article. Let's see what it says about um, about the Pope. Okay. So I'll read it out. Um, out loud. All right. Uh, you have read five of ten few articles. But I'm not a subscriber. <laughs> okay. Um, shadows of company gathering to pick Pope. Can everyone see the screen? I can. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yes. All right. So this is a picture of Pope Benedict. The what numbers? Who knows Roman numerals? Sixteen. Sixteen. 16th, okay, 16th, um, spoke, speaking to the Cardinals at the Vatican on Saturday, all right? So this is from Vatican City in Rome. As Cardinals from around the world begin arriving in Rome for a conclave to elect a, su a successor to Pope Benedict XVI, new shadows have fallen over the delicate transition which the Vatican fears might influence the vote and with it the direction of the Roman Catholic Church. All right, so what's this first paragraph saying? What's this first paragraph saying? They have some get together. <laughs> All right, so they're, they're saying that they're worried about the transition um, in electing a new pope and how it could affect the Catholic Church. All right, so there's worry surrounding the effects of electing a new pope. Alright? Um, in recent days, often speculative reports, some even alleging gay sex scandals in the Vatican, others focusing on particular cardinals stung by the child sex abuse crisis suggesting fierce internal struggles as prelate scramble to consolidate power and attack enemies in the dying days of a troubled papacy. All right, so this paragraph right here is talking about all the scandals um, of the church, of the Catholic Church. I have heard that... Um the fight between the lobbies are very, very bad, very bad. Hey guys, sorry about that. I got kicked out for some reason. Oh, again. Hi. Yeah, sorry. I got kicked out for some reason. Technology. You can never trust it. <laughs> you can never trust it. Okay. Uh, let's go back to what we were reading.
Okay. Oh, this is a new article. Alright. Oh, I might have clicked on the wrong one. Alright, so this is talking about the Pope's resignation. What were we reading just now? Uh, sorry, give me one second. Alright, so let's go back to this. Um, New York Times. So this is the last paragraph we just read. In recent days, often speculative reports in the Italian news media, some even alleging gay sex scandals in the Vatican, others focusing on particular cardinals stung by the child sex abuse crisis, have dominated headlines, suggesting fierce internal struggles as prelates scramble to consolidate power and attack enemies in the dying days of a troubled papacy. So basically, what this what is this paragraph saying? Who who kind of understands what's going on? Who kind of understands what's going on here? Who has a general idea? Go ahead, Lisa, <clears throat> or anybody else. All right, Louisa, go. <laughs> I can. What do you say? Something's hey. happening there. What? <laughs> can you uh, speak up a little bit? Something's happening there, but in this little paragraph, I can't say anything. Speak. So this paragraph is talking about um, all the scandals uh, that have surrounded the church. All right. uh, to me, it is that inside the church uh, there are a lot of hidden troubles and fight uh, between lobbies. Yeah, exactly. So there's a there's there's scandals and then there's like a bureaucratic problem as well. A bureaucratic problem as well. Okay, so let's, let's keep reading. There are reports which the Vatican has vehemently denied. So this means that vehemently means what? Strongly. Okay. Vehement, vehemently means strongly. Alright, hi Louisa. Uh, touch on some of the most vexing issues of Benedict's, of Benedict's reign, including the child sex abuse crisis and international criticisms of the Vatican Bank's opaque record keeping. The recent explosion of bad press, which some Vatican experts say is fed by carefully orchestrated leaks meant to weaken some Apple contenders, also speak to Benedict's own difficulties governing which analysts say he is trying to address, albeit belatedly, with several high-profile personnel changes. So there's problems within the church. Okay, they're saying the Benedict can't lead. Um, so they're basically talking about um, leadership struggles in the church. Okay. All right. So this is what this is basically what this article is mostly about. Um, I'm going to post a link in the chat box if anybody else wants to read up on it for some more. But let's move on to something else. All right? Let's see. Um, do we still want to stay on world news or we can go to U.S. news? Um, or 
we can go to a specific uh, area of the world, Africa, the Americas, Asia Pacific, Europe, Middle East, or we can go to, to the New York region, science, health, sports, um, opinions, All right? Anybody have any choices? Maybe arts. Arts. What? Okay. This is cool. All right, so the arts. Let's see. So you want to see this video? Let's watch this video. It's about the Academy Awards, which is happening tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a special Oscar preview edition of the Sweet Spot. Many of you spent weeks filling out by ballots. Other people are taking their time. So there's a lot to uh, there, there's a lot to contemplate. Let's just see some of your Oscar. You don't really ask her. It's like Tosker. That's Oscar's cousin, Gustav. <laughs> Gustav, and why is that, Tony? I think because uh, Oscar is the copyrighted intellectual property of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. So let's be clear. Let's be clear. This is not Oscar. What are you doing, Oscar night? Sunday night. Do you have any plans? with you and having the time of my life. Oh, yeah. Because we're going to have the special live sweet spot extravaganza. Three hours long, special guests, glitz, glamour. I mean, you begin with, begin with our correspondent, and then Melina Rysik, our carpet bagger. Our carpet bagger. She's going to be inside, and she might even get on the phone with with us. With us, we are not going to be out there uh, in California. Um, we're going to be right here at, at the New York Times uh, building. We're going to have help help on the fashion front. There's also going to be a live blog going on. And For also, hours. we will have the, the, the wit and wisdom of our, our readers and viewers and New York Times users, because we're going to have a whole Twitter stream on the, on the side of our little box that we're living in, um, where all of your uh, insights and uh, comments and um, wisdom can, uh, can bubble up. I'm, I'm anticipating there might be some so-called hot mic problems. As you know, off camera, I've been known to be a little bit profane. So I'm concerned in an effort to further advance my sort of wingspan as a times when I could end my career right on the broadcast. Well, that would be that would be something to see, but we should say... You would we, drop me like a box of rocks. You would say, I didn't know he was going to say that. I, there I was talking about well, then Lincoln and he hit that, the Effenheimer. I, that, I have that, no idea. The next sweet spot would be, would be you apologizing if anyone was offended. I, All right, so this is a preview for, us, for the Oscars tomorrow night. Okay, everyone knows what the Oscars are, right? Yes. Yeah. Are you yes. going to watch it tomorrow? No, I just read. Who won? <laughs> do you guys know who's in um, about the cinema movie? Yeah. Do you guys know what? Uh, do you know what the who the nominations are for the Oscars this year? The Miserables. Yeah, Les Miserables. Have you guys seen that movie? No, I don't. I don't see that movie. So these, so these are um, for the best picture. We have Zero Dark Thirty, Lincoln, Les, Les Miserables, Beast of the Southern Wild, Argo, Django, Life, and Silver Linings. Which one do you think will make the best picture? Let's vote. For me, Life of Pi. Life of Pi? I like that one, too, for Best Picture. Do you guys agree? I, I, I agree. agree. I watched it. Still haven't seen it. Life of Pi. Cool. Cool, so we just voted. <laughs> for, for an Oscar. <laughs> Hopefully that counts towards um, their decision. <laughs> Let's see. What else can we talk about? So, Karar wants to talk about...
cell phones or freedom or food or movies or sports. Let's talk about sports. Let's see. Mm. Want to look at sports? Yeah. Mm. After what Armstrong did, I don't like sport. You don't like sports? Yeah. Yes, Things after. are conversation topics. You never, you can never find um, one thing that everyone likes to do. You know. <laughs> After what Armstrong did, I don't like sport. <laughs> After what Armstrong did. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can read a really good sports article. Uh, this one is about ice fishing. Does anyone know? Anybody ice fish here? Anybody live, like, in Russia? No, but I know what is it. <laughs> what it is, yeah. I've never, obviously, I've never been ice fishing. <laughs> so in this moment, I could do that. Uh, we have uh, almost uh, forty centimeters of snow right now. <laughs> oh my God! Where are you living? In Italy, northern North Italy. You're in, are you in the mountains? No, 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 uh, no, no, in, in plain, but uh, it's snowing a lot. Oh, and wow. uh, in my city, the airport is closed. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. So I'm going to, to go to ice fishing. Wow. Okay. Cool. Let me know how it goes. Um, all right. So this one is talking about dope tests and ice fishing. No, beard doesn't count. All right. So let's see. And this is in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is in the middle of America. It's very cold there. Okay, lots of snow. It's Midwest. The ice fishermen spent a week on the frozen lake, and on the last day, after emptying perch and bluegill from their buckets and scrubbing bait from their hands, several winners of the World Ice Fishing Championship were ushered into their rooms in the Plaza Hotel. There, an official from the United States Anti-Doping Agency ordered them to provide urine samples for a surprise test to detect steroids and growth hormones, drugs not normally associated with the quiet solitude of ice fishing. So what's going on here? This is kind of related to, like, Armstrong. <laughs> I'm over <Right>. Armstrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now, uh, most sports are performing um, dope test. Basically, dope test checks for steroids or growth hormones, right? Anything, anything that um, can make you improve in a sport, um, but it's artificial, right? So it's not true improvement. All right, so it's where they're looking for it in ice fishing, though, because it's such a quiet sport. It's not like, like, running or uh, or cycling. You know, people don't really need to do steroids or growth hormones for ice fishing. Right? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys understand? So they say here, we don't test for beer because then everybody will fail. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. Um, <laughs> with doping a rampant problem throughout sports, drug testing has arrived at the most unlikely places, including the chilly Big U Plain Reservoir, where competitors hide fish in their pockets and prize patience over power. The leaders of the sport of ice fishing have started a long shot bid to take their lonely pursuit to the Olympics. A berth in the winter games would come with many obvious advantages, 
but first there are hurdles to clear. Once the anglers shuffled off the ice and put down their rods, they had to submit to the same examinations as world-class sprinters and weightlifters. All right, so they want to make ice fishing an Olympic sport. All right, ice fishing could become an Olympic sport. All right, so all people or most people who participate in the Olympics have to get drug tested. Okay, everybody understand? Yes. Yeah. Um, in sports like ice fishing, where speed and strength are not necessarily at a premium, an agent from an international anti-doping federation can seem like, well, a fish out of the water. <laughs> All right. So they're saying that um, a person from an anti-doping federation can look like a fish out of the water when they're trying to drug test an ice fisher. Because ice fishing is not a sport where um, steroids or growth hormones are necessarily taken. All right? Ice fishing is not a particularly physical sport. Most days are spent crouched low around the ice hole in snow pants, knee pads, and improvised shin guards made out of foam. The hardest part is staying warm. Most anglers forgo gloves in order to better feel fish tugging on their rods. Okay, so it's not it's not really a physical sport. Okay, it's not a physical sport. Fishing officials puzzled over whether doping would even help anglers jigging for panfish, roughfish, and crappy. So they're wondering if, uh, if by trying to get these different types of fishes uh, that they're even going to be doping. All right? So those are three different types of fish. Panfish, rough fish, and crappy. All right? So let's stop there. What do you guys think about this, about them testing um, ice fishers? It's not necessary. Yeah. Do you, do you think that um, do you think they have a reason to do it? Yes, because he he can make uh, tricks with with doping. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they have to do it just because of like the history behind it. Okay, so. They have to do it because of the history behind it. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's see. Let's choose something else to talk about. You can also go here. I had this up before, but when my computer. Google Hangout could be out. Um, let's see, conversation topics. All right, let's stay here for a little bit while I look. So, what else do you guys want to see here? There's also all these other sports under here hockey, soccer. Soccer, maybe. Soccer? All right, let's see what they say about soccer. Or football. Or football? Do you guys like football? Yes. All right, let's look at the NFL. Hmm. Let's see. Which article do you want to read? Uh, let's talk about um, how the Ravens Center is retiring. I didn't know that. Cool. 
Wars. Let's see. Let's see. This looks kind of interesting. All right. So the NFL, which is the National Football League, okay. So that's the National Football League. They try a new method for testing mental agility. Okay. What does that mean, mental agility? Who knows what that means? The, the capacity of, of the brain. Yeah. Exactly. So it's so what's agility? What does that mean? Um the the capacity the the strong I don't know. Or the capacity the capacity of, of ca catch the ball. Yeah. So being agile is just being, being like being able to rapidly respond to changing situations. So to be agile um, means being able to quickly respond to certain situations. Okay? On the field, a football player who is agile can move around um, the field really quickly. Okay? Like really quickly. Like they're really fast. Okay? Mental agility. So if they're talking about agility on the field, if they're talking about it mentally, if they're talking about um, the capacity to think quickly. Okay? All right? All right, so for decades, hundreds of college players have gathered each year at the NFL scouting combine where their strength is tested, their speed is timed, and in the test to measure their intelligence, they are asked questions like, when a rope is selling 20 cents per two feet, how many feet can you buy for $30? Who knows, this? Who knows the answer for this question? This is a math question. This is a math question. Probability. I mean, proportions. Who knows the answer? It's a little bit hard. Let's think. Let's someone f try to figure that out while I read the rest of the article. Okay. <laughs> Whoever whoever's good at math, put it in the chat box. All right. So that query is part of the Wonderlic personnel test, a twelve-minute, fifty-item quiz that has been used by NFL teams since the 1970s. It is, however, infamously unreliable in predicting football success. Forgettable players have scored high, stars low, and there have been quiet concerns that it has a racial bias. All right? So they're saying that the current test that they're using is not reliable for football success. All right? The current test that they are using is not reliable for football success. All right. Um, let's see. Do you, so. Let's let's ask. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do you think it's important these tests? Uh, no, for for um, our sport is not not important because it's very mathematic. Uh huh. So yeah, so you're saying that it's not really necessary for football. For a football player, uh, I think that it's not necessary. Okay. All right. So let's keep reading. Let's keep reading and see what he says. So the players at this week's combine 
are facing a new segment in their extended job interviews. An hour-long psychological assessment designed to determine and quantify the nebulous qualities that coaches have long believed make the most successful players. All right? So along with an interview, they have a, a, a test, a psychological test. Okay? Along with their interviews, they have a psychological test to take. Okay? All right, and this is the new test they're trying to implement. Um, so they're testing for whether or not you have motivation, competitiveness, passion, and mental toughness. All right, so what are all what, what category would you put all these words under? What category would all these words be under? You're testing for motivation, right? Motivation, competitiveness, passion, and mental toughness. What's a what's a good summary of what they're testing for? Com competitiveness. Uh -huh. What's a, what's a good summary that they're testing for? What's the main thing they're testing for? They're trying to measure. So what are they trying to measure? They're trying to measure a person's what? I think passion is the important thing. So it's not, it's not one of the words here. It's not one of the words that I just put in the chat box. It's a word that we all know, okay? It's a word that tells us how a person acts, who a person is. What's that word called? The personality. Yes, thank you, personality. Okay, so they're trying to measure a person's personality to see whether or not it will fit um, on the field. Okay? So the new test, like the Warner League, is mandatory for the more than 300 players who attend, and it will be given the fir for the first time uh, on Friday. While many coaches and general managers consider the Wonder League particularly useful in evaluating quarterbacks and offensive linemen, <laughs> Positions that are believed to demand the greatest intellect because of the need to decipher complex defenses. The hope is that the new test, called the Player Assessment Tool, will give teams clear insight into a broader range of players. All right. So two questions. What is the old test called? What is the new test called? What's the old test called? Read the paragraph because both of the answers are in there. So both of the answers to my questions are in the paragraph. The name is Wonder League. Yes. For the the, the, the old test. Uh huh. Yeah. And the new test called a player assessment tool. Perfect. Okay. So this is a new test now. So this is what they're going to be giving new uh new people. All right. Um, and they want to give this test because 
These are positions that are believed to demand the greatest intellect, all right, because of the need to decipher complex defenses, okay? So right here, they're talking about whoever knows football, all right, if you know American football, it all runs on different plays. <laughs> different plays that the team makes, okay? And having a good defense is crucial uh, to winning, right? So they're testing for that if you have the intellect to decipher these defenses. All right, and then there's testimony here. Uh, one person says, I knew players who didn't score well on the Wonderlick, but had great instincts. All right, said Ernie Accorsi, a former Giants general manager who was consulted during the creation of the new test. I had a player once. This guy played in a good league at college, but the psychological testing indicated he didn't handle the pressure well. You know what? He didn't, as it turned out. The Wonderlick can't tell you that. Right? Yeah, no problem. Okay? That means that, that the old test is not good. It's not yeah. a good test. It's not a good test, exactly. Exactly. Alright. So this new test, it was devised or designed by Harold Goldstein, who's a professor of industrial... Excuse me? Yeah? Feature? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'm listening, Angelica. Do you have a question? Do you have a question, Angelica? Do you have a question? Okay. Um, so, this guy, Harold Goldstein, he's a professor of industrial and organizational psychology at Baruch College in New York. He worked with Cyrus Murray, a lawyer in Washington, who leads the Fritz Pollard Alliance, which monitors the NFL's minority hiring practices. All right, so this new test is supposed to tell us that they can uh, have the personality to make these good defenses, okay? All right. So yeah. So like uh, exactly like Jose said, this is a personality test. Okay. So personality tests have been a staple in other industries, and some NFL teams have used them during their scouting efforts, which often take months. But last fall, Goldstein and Berry began the process. Of producing the first such test for the entire league. They asked a group of general managers what qualities they wanted in a player. They came up with 16 aspects thought to be predictors of NFL success, including learning agility and conscientiousness. All right. So, okay, so it's. Can everyone still see? So this is saying that they came up with 16 different aspects um, thought to be predictors of NFL success. All right. Can you guys think of any other things? Can you guys think of any other predictors of having a good football no. career? So we have learning agility, consciousness. What does conscientiousness mean? What does this word mean? Uh, I think that it means uh, health of the of 
psychological health. Yeah, so so to be conscientious means to be dedicated. Ah, okay. Alright, so it means to be dedicated and to be a hard worker. Okay. What other okay. what other aspects do you think um, can predict um, a person's success in, the, in football? I think that uh, the the strong of uh, of the body uh -huh. is important or yeah. not? So we're talking about personality aspects, not physical. Okay. Uh, a positive uh, uh -huh. attitude. Positive attitude. I like that. Uh -huh. What else can we think of? Um. Um. Uh, teamwork. Uh -huh. So being able to perform well on a team. Yeah, what else? Um. A healthy healthy personality so, yeah a healthy personality okay uh, Angelica or Ben can you think of any So much, so much characteristics. Yeah, there's a lot. Six, Sixteen is a lot. Yeah, exactly. So there's a wide range of characteristics to choose from. Okay. David, can you think of another one for us? Oh, I don't think David's there. Alright, so the test closely resembles those given to firefighters because they, like football players, must be able to quickly assess a situation and decide how to proceed under stress. Alright, so this is the key word right here, stress. Alright, so they work for the test is designed to know how people will react under stress, okay, when they have to perform a duty. Like a firefighter, okay, like a firefighter or something like that. Okay, everybody understand? Firefighter, what, what does it mean? A firefighter is um, a person who fights fires. A person who fights fires, like a police officer. Like a police officer, but, but it's a firefighter. Person, the person who, uh, whenever there's a fire, you call a number, and they come and put out, put out the fire. They have like fire trucks. Have you ever seen a fire truck? Yes, with with the children. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it's like a real, like real life. Um, let's see. 
Let's let's get a pitcher up with a five five eight. See, this is a firefighting. Okay. Yeah, you see, they have the hose where they where the water goes out from. And let's see. Uh, and right here, that's the fire truck in the background. Yes. Okay. Does that hard work? Yeah. Yeah. So the goal of that test it was to eliminate the impact of prior knowledge, subjects taught in school like math, in which racial and socioeconomic factors may have an influence. Okay. What does this part mean right here? Right, what does that mean right there? So they're trying they're trying to eliminate um, certain racial and socio economic factors that might have had an influence. What does socioeconomic mean? Uh, the, the environment uh, where he lived. So the socioeconomic the status means the amount of money you make um, and it's related to kind of the society that you live in. Okay. So in America, in America, we talk a lot about people from different socioeconomic levels. Okay, basically different, different uh, people who make different amounts of money. Okay? Okay. Alright. Does that happen? Do you, where are you from, Jose? I am from Colombia. Is, is that the same thing? Like, kind of like that? It, def it definitely is. Like, people uh, from different classes, right? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. In my country, the socioeconomical factor is very complicated. What do you mean? <laughs> As so much people uh, living in in poor conditions. Mm -hmm. So you have people living in poverty, or then, or then there are rich people. All right. Okay. I think that's what you're saying, right? So you're saying there's more people at lower levels in society than there are rich people. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I trying to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh so to to determine their personalities the test will ask players a series of questions about their preferences and behavior. To evaluate their cognitive abilities, what does cognitive mean? The, the, no, the knowledge. The knowledge, yeah. So cognitive uh, is basically uh, talking about uh, being able to process, remember, or whatnot from knowledge, okay? So being able to process, um, remember, knowledge. Okay. So to evaluate these abilities, the test 
might tell them to look at four diagrams and figure out how they relate. Then, to measure how quickly they can adjust their thinking, the items they are comparing might change, forcing the players to determine their relationships anew. Okay, so they're like kind of doing a test where they're like tricking them. All right. All right. Any questions? No. Oh, okay. To see how they learn best, the test will present questions in verbal and graphic form. All right. Players will have an hour to take the exam on a computer. All right, so the test is in both verbal and graphic form. All right, do you know what those two forms mean? Uh, graphic and what is the other form? Verbal. So it's going to be words. Okay, so it's going to be something that's substantive. So it's basically going to be like um, questions um, with words and questions with designs or pictures. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, cool. All right. So let's just see what they say here because we're not going to have time to finish. Um, let's see. So to see how they learn best, the test will present questions. Okay, I just said that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the next paragraph says, how do you have Eli Manning scrambling for his life and throw that ball in the Super Bowl? Very sad which is referring to Manning Stewart to David Tyree and the 2008 title game. After two tests, just suggest to me you're testing how smart you are. It's so much more than that. All right, so after two tests, they're saying after two tests are not enough um, to say how a player will perform. Okay? Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So I'm going to send that article to you in case you want to read the rest of it. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. In case you want to read the rest of it. All right. Okay. Cool. Do you have any other questions?